Welcome to today's practice session at the Sepang International Circuit. We're approximately 60 kilometers south of Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. This five and a half kilometer track provides all of the things that a racing driver could want of a circuit. So after the first race, how do you think this season will compare to previous years? Well, I hope that we're in for a fantastic season. The Mercedes team have certainly come out of pre-season testing the strongest, which is all well and good, but it's the racing where the pace really counts. It's always difficult to predict, therefore, who's going to come out on top. The new regulations for this year say goodbye to the somewhat unique nose designs that we saw on the 2014 cars. The 2014 changes were brought in to promote safety, but I don't think it was anticipated how the teams would exploit the regulations. This year, those regulations have been tightened up to give us a more traditional look to the noses on the 2015 cars. What's up guys and welcome to the channel, Shane here and this is round two of my F1 2015 career mode. Today you join me at Malaysia and uh, I'm just going to chuck it out there, this is not one of my favourite circles at all, mainly because of this corner here. I just, I really struggle to hit it, it's got such a late apex and it's a little bit uphill so you can't actually see the apex until you're, until you're right on top of it which is a bit of a pain in the ass. but anyway we're going to have a look at the, uh, at the first practice lap, see how the exit is to this corner. And that was terrible, completely outbroke myself. I've, um, I've really utilised this practice session because last time I didn't need it, so I did utilise it as much. And I really wanted to try and get the best setup possible for the track and the race ahead. So um, I tried out a, different, a couple of different setups, and I think towards the end, let's have a quick look. Okay, well, we're trying a number of different setups, and they. Some of them are working, some of them aren't. We need to just find the optimal setup for this track. And uh, I believe as we come across the line, we're going to get into P7. Or P5, actually, P6. Might drop back to P7. And let's see where we were at the end of the session. It's Nico Rosberg who's been fastest today, but it's only practice. He'll be wanting to repeat that pace tomorrow when it comes to qualifying. Yep, certainly. So we've come in P10 just behind our teammate, which isn't great. If you can't beat the cars out on track, you at least want to beat your teammate. But we're going to do our best. As um, Crofty just said, it's just practice at the moment. We've got qualifying ahead of us tomorrow. So let's skip straight to that then. And welcome to Malaysia as we head into the all-important qualifying session. The drivers are raring to go, and we're just waiting for the lights to go green to signify the start of the qualifying hour. Last year, we saw a wonderful race here in Malaysia, and I'm expecting another fascinating weekend to come here in Kuala Lumpur. Well, there are at least three or four other drivers that could be strong contenders for a front row start tomorrow. So it's difficult to predict who will come out on top, but it's certainly going to be an exciting qualifying session today. So here we go guys, for another round of one shot qualifying and uh, yeah, I hate this, I hate this, I want to be able to do a full length or even a short qualifying, I want to be able to do a 15 minute session but still only do a 25% race and I really wish Codemask could patch that in, but anyway, we've started our flying lap and we already know from our previous lap that the fuel's in rich, but I've want to put it up into rich anyway and uh, as you can see, it looks like Bottas is actually in front, no, Hamilton's in front and we are up into P3, P6, so you can see how closely packed the field is because um, you can actually see on the track there's Hamilton and there's seven cars between us at the moment so we're still quite close together we might be able to get I'm hoping for about P5 P6 around that area if not I, just, I want to be above 10 taking this corner nicely actually gaining quite a lot of time on Hamilton there but losing it on the exit a little bit what can we do along this loft long left hander and then it flicks quite tight to the right and then we've got two right handers afterwards keeping it nice on the track extending ever so slightly putting the right one tire on the curb doing it again here corner cutting a tiny little bit but we're in p1 we're in provisional p run for the malaysian grand prix but anyway as we come down to this corner the mercedes and outbreak us quite easily we take the apex perfectly losing it again on the on the outside we're going left and right trying to get our traction it's just not happening hamilton pulls away this corner i could have taken a little bit tighter it wasn't too bad considering and now we've just got the long straights left after this tight right hand with the apex i can never hit and it's the uh, it's the straights where we're going to lose some time Locking up a tiny bit there, missing the apex, but it means we get a better run into this. But, as you can see, we're in P4 at the moment, P5. We're just going to keep on dropping places while the Mercedes engines go past us. Are we going to maintain P5? Maybe. We've missed the apex quite significantly. We've got a poor exit, lost of traction, P6. The start finish line is a couple of hundred meters up the straight, and we have come home in P6 for qualifying, which is pretty good. It's pretty good, it's above P10, which is what I wanted. 
Daniel Ricardo looks happy with that, and so does Jeff. So it's all good, quite a good qualifying session. Hopefully we can uh, turn that into some significant points it's in the race. Mighty qualifying performance from Mercedes today with both cars on the front row for the race tomorrow. They've really worked hard this weekend and it seems they've been able to set up the cars perfectly today. Whether this will translate into race pace tomorrow, well, we'll just have to wait and see. Well, to be fair, the Mercedes are pretty strong regardless, so I don't think they have to try as hard as everyone else, but never mind, we'll see what happens tomorrow. My teammate not doing as well and is down in P12 again, so yeah, we'll see what the race brings. Good afternoon and welcome from Sepang, where the cars and drivers are getting ready to start the Malaysia Grand Prix. On pole today is Lewis Hamilton. The Mercedes was dominant during qualifying and with the power unit advantage, well, you just can't see anybody challenging for that race win today. He was driving on another level yesterday, so it wouldn't be a surprise if he just pulls away from the field and is untouchable. But as we know, anything can happen in Formula 1, so we'll just have to wait and see. Nico won the last race with a performance that Toto Wolff called a drive of true class. He seems really at home in this Mercedes team, and it's from that platform that he's able to put in these great performances. Nico certainly had the edge over Lewis last time out, and he'll want to put one over on his teammate again today. Don't underestimate the mind games that are going on between these pair as they battle it out for supremacy. And here we are guys, on the grid for the Malaysian Grand Prix. Now I'm not sure why I went through this for about 3 or 4 extra seconds. I wasn't intending on changing my tyres, I was like, oh look, let's see what we can do on the grid. Or let's see what we can do with all the people around us, which turns out to be absolutely nothing. But anyway, we're here. Let's see if you can manage third or better. Third or better, very optimistic Jeff, again. And it's lights out and away we go and Bottas got up to a flying start. He's in P. He's, oh my goodness. Both the Williams have got off to a flying start. So Massa and Bottas got off to a good start. Massa's overtaken us. We're going to try and take him off on the inside. It looks like Verstappen's taken us off on the inside. We're now on the inside of uh, Massa. Hopefully we can maintain position. It looks like Verstappen went into the back of Vettel, it looks like, in the Ferrari. We're on the outside of the Ferrari. No, we're not. We've lost, we've lost our traction. We've hit Verstappen. Do we maintain P6 for the time being? It looks like we do with a break nice and early into this corner. Try and catch up. We go around the outside. What an overtake on Sebastian Vettel. We took it around the outside. We broke late. Vettel broke too early and we went around the outside, which was a pretty superb move if I don't say so myself. And just remember, guys, this is the second day I've played this game. Actually, no, it's still Friday. I'm recording this on the day the game came out. So, uh, yeah, I'm still very, I'm still quite slow. Still going to get used to the setups, etc. The track is clear, so someone has already come off. It wasn't me. Breaking nice and late. And can we catch up Kimi? Taking corners like that, I should imagine so. We've got to try and avoid that this race. We don't want to pick up any penalties. Not that we have done so far, but we don't want to, we don't want to exploit the game for its weaknesses at the moment. And that is not giving anyone penalties. But if needs be, we might just do it. Anyway, we're going on to the, uh, the my most hatred, cor my most hated corner in the whole of the Grand Prix. Just, you can't see the apex and there's just no braking zone it's just absolutely terrible but anyway we get quite good traction off that we're going to put the uh, fuel up into Trich to try and defend from Sebastian Vettel who's going to have a look on the inside we're going to be sticking around the outside and who's going to come out on top we give him the room Sebastian Vettel's already there but we get the DRS if it was activated which it isn't and it looks like Vettel's got got the position there's nothing really we can do we are engine compared to the Ferrari it's just well it's just underpowered but anyway it looks like we're in the slipstream of the Ferrari can we dive it up the inside of Sebastian Vettel we're going wheel to wheel in this corner we take up the inside we haven't collected each other yet he's now on the inside we've got the outside we go a little bit wide and it looks like dare I say it looks like we've got the move done engineer Jeff has confirmed that we've taken fifth but that doesn't mean Vettel's not going to give it another go you can see the proximity arrow here's he done a dive up the inside not this time, we hit a late apex and run a little bit wide. And it looks like we're maintaining P5 at the moment. Ever so slightly cutting the grass. And there as well. And here. Again, I've just taken so long to get used to this game. I know I should be better than this, but unfortunately I'm not when I'm playing the game this so early on since release. But now skipping to the end of lap two. We are, we are still defending from Sebastian Vettel. He's going to take another look up in the inside. And he's probably going to make the move stick. We've gone very wide. We should get a better exit. Maybe we can get the cut back. Nope, he goes in well. We kind of hit side pods, actually. So that's neither of our fault. But we've got a yellow flag up, I just saw, on the left-hand side. 
Okay, DRS is now available, but there's a Ferrari in the wall back there, so let's just get that in slow motion and see who that was. Here we are again, DRS is now being enabled, and I noticed there's someone on the left-hand side of the track in the wall, and who is it? That's Kimi Raikkonen in the Ferrari, so he's been in the wall somehow. He's either come and collected with someone, or oh, God knows what's happened, basically. That means we are up into P4, which is really good. Um, the AI are very unpredictable. They're taking a lot more daring moves. They're acting like real drivers, which, I, which is why I think they're taking each other out. Well, not so much taking each other out, but which is why I think they're, uh, they're taking more chances and then crashing. So that's pretty good for the game. So here we are, coming towards the end of lap three now. I can't believe we're only on lap three and so much has happened already. But um, it looks like Mass is going to try and get the run, out, run on us. He's going to take it around the outside. Will he be able to pin it on the outside? I go quite defensive in the middle. I try to stick it out. And it looks like Massa, I've got the DRS. Hamilton's put up the fastest lap. I've got the DRS, but Massa's just shot off into the distance. And here comes bloody Vettel as well. So he's flown off. Okay, on the primes the next stint in two laps time. But with them trying to sling up the inside of Sebastian Vettel, can we get it done? We go quite deep into this corner, pushing him wide. Flick it around the inside. Massa's got a beautiful line through there. So there's, he's just shot off into the distance. Uh, we lose traction on the back end again. Thank you very much, race engineer. Uh, Jeff, sorry, I keep on, I'm used to calling him a race engineer from F1 2014. And we go a little bit deep into this corner. Will Vettel get the run on us? I don't think so. He's right there. We're going to put the brakes into rear. It looks like a stop from locking up. We have to lean off the accelerator quite a bit to make sure we get around this corner. And as soon as I said that, it didn't happen. But it looks like we've held off Sebastian Vettel so far. And let's see what happens on the, uh, let's see what happens on the uh, back straight. Well, here we are, cutting to the end of lap four now. Just pretty much a lap. We just keep going laps after laps because this is where the action happens. And uh, we run right ever so slightly. Not as bad as the last time. We get quite a decent run out of the corner. But Massa, no, that's not even Massa. That's Kimi Raikkonen with the uh, Ferrari engine. We bang tyres and bounce off each other. Nothing really much we can do. I break quite late, follow him through, kiss the apex. Oh, I just missed the apex, actually. And I got DRS, but it's just no match against the Ferrari engine. Is there anything we can do? I think we're slowly gaining on him, slowly. If only there was a couple of hundred meters more, we could have passed him. If this was Dubai or Abu Dhabi, that's what I meant. If this was Abu Dhabi, we could have gone past him, but it's not. Actually, the back straight in China would have been lovely as well. That's coming up next. But yeah, we just don't have the we don't have mechanical grip in the slow corners to try and get past him. Not to worry, though. 75%. Seventy-five percent of my starting load, and uh, fifty percent would be seven laps into the Grand Prix. So we're doing quite good. We've got some fuel to burn. So let's see what happens in a couple of laps' time. Well, truthfully honest, nothing really much happened. We're uh, we're going into the pits now. So yeah, sorry about that. So let's see what happens in a couple of laps' time. And the answer is nothing at the moment because we're going to go into the pits. We run really wide going into there. We're going to try and do the undercut. As you can see, we're pitting on lap five. We weren't due to pit to uh, lap six or seven, so we had to call this in using the new uh, radio features, which you obviously can't use on the PC at the moment, voice commands, but we had to call it in manually. I really find the uh, controls for this really hard. You have to hold down the left bumper and then use the directional keys to select, but I haven't learned where everything is at the moment, so it's not done by touch. Whereas in F1 2014, I can just touch my way around the D-pad and know where everything was. I've actually got to look and learn where all the options are. But let's, um, we come out in P17, and uh, let's see where we are in a lapse time. But this is a lap later, just over a lap later, we're on the uh, P13, so we've gained a couple of places in the pits, it looks like someone's retired, I'm not entirely sure who that is, I'll give a guess, either a Manor or a uh, McLaren Honda. Jeff's confirming that I've saved enough fuel, or just haven't used enough, uh, much fuel to uh, run a faster engine mode, which is pretty sick, but anyway, we're going to cut to the end of this lap and see where, uh, see where we emerge uh, going down the pit straight. And as you can see, we're coming down the pits now. Speaking on top of my engineer, I've decided to ignore him now. I'm just going to talk over him. And we are on the outside of... Was that for strapping? I think so. I think we may have just spun for strapping, which I do feel bad about, but I don't. He should be more careful. I am in the sister... I am in the, like, the brother Red Bull. I am in the older Red Bull. So um, do they call that the brother Red Bull? I know sister Red Bull is like the younger one, but um, I'm guessing it's the sister Red Bull and it's the older one as well. I don't know, can you let me know in the comments whether I'm the brother Red Bull and that's sister Red Bull, or vice versa, or if it's both just sister Red Bulls. But anyway, yeah, he should have been more cautious because I am the proper Red Bull. And uh, yeah, we're not going to talk about that fucking corner. Or that fucking corner. Okay, okay, I, I understand, Jeff. Oh, yeah, I didn't really get the memo at all, did I, Jeff? But anyway, 
yeah, Verstappen should have been more careful. It's unfortunate. And look at this. There's a fucking plane in the sky as well. So they, they added planes into the sky, but they couldn't add a safety car in. We've got planes, but no safety cars. But anyway, we're going to skip on to later in the Grand Prix once we get our traction back. Look at the drifts going on here. So moving on two laps later, the engineers just told me that Kvyat is actually losing half a second per lap. He keeps him battling with uh, Hulkenberg, which is why he's losing so much time. So we're pretty comfortable at the moment, and um, it doesn't look like we're going to chase down Massa. So we're just going to sit tight for an extra four laps. And we've lost, we've lost the rear end. We've gone onto the grass, sliding left. We try and go full lock, and nothing happens. We've managed just to get it past the wall without going into it. That was a lucky escape. That could have been, that could have been front wing off. That could have been puncher. How we kept it out of everything now, I don't know. But that's what I love about this game. There's just so much torque on the cars that you really have to be careful with your throttle management or you just bin it like I did. But anyway, moving on to two laps later. And I think it's, uh, I think it's safe to say that I've ruined my tyres by having that little half spin and then going onto the grass and then on the gravel itself. So uh, Kibia has been catching me ever so slightly. Um, and we're, we're definitely losing time to mass as we go along this back straight. I actually hit that curb very nicely. It's probably the best I've taken that corner the whole weekend. So there on the left-hand side of the mini-map, you can see Nico and Lewis going. And then there is uh, there's the other cars, but Massa is at least I would say about 10 seconds up the field, and with two laps to go, I just need to keep it on the track and make sure I don't I don't spin out anymore. And as you can see, Kvyat is is only a couple of seconds behind me. And here we are on the final lap, ladies and gentlemen. Lewis Hamilton has come home in first place, so he's taken the pole and he's also taken the win. It looks like we're going to come home in sixth place. Look at the tyres on the right-hand side. Just a note. Console players don't have that graphic on the right hand side because you have the race engineer which you can uh, call in for updates on your tyres etc. We can do that but we don't have the voice commands at the moment so it's a little bit harder for us so we get the uh, we get the handy graphic to our right hand side which is really good so you can see our front tyres are a little bit, a lot more worn than our rear tyres and all we have to do is bring it down this last straight around the last hairpin and then cross the line and hopefully we can secure 6th place in today's race. You can hear the car grinding out and the tyres locking because of the lack of grip. Losing the rear end ever so slightly on the end. And here we are, check and flag. Daniel Ricciardo comes home in sixth place. Look at the train of cars as well. At least Kvyat was keeping them up and not me. Daniel looks happy. And let's see what the uh, Sky Sports team have to say about that one. And there are the results for this weekend's Grand Prix. And it's Lewis Hamilton who moves up to the top of the driver's table after his win here today. It's a position that Lewis is familiar with and he'll be keeping his feet on the ground but he knows that every point counts and that he's off to a great start. That's it for today's Grand Prix and from Ant and I it's goodbye and see you again next time. Well there we have you guys, there's the results. So Lewis Hamilton going first, Nico, Sebastian Vettel, Valtteri Boss, that's Felipe Massa and then myself. So we did quite good. We're still in fourth in the Drivers' Championship which I'm very happy with. Let's quickly flick over to the Constructors' Championship. Please Shane. There we go. And uh, we are in third place. So that's not too bad at all. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I shall see you next time for some more F1 2015. Bye bye.